It is still the breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. And uh, of course, uh, now we're going to be talking about the conversation on uh, the hashtag Occupy Lekki toll gates. The federal government and the Lagos state government have put out their thoughts uh, very um, expressively on this and said they will not be tolerating any form of protest. Um, and uh, of course, um, you know, the, the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, also uh, spoke about it, saying that the destruction that occurred in the last protest will not be allowed to happen again. Uh, the, of course, uh, promoters of the protest have said that there is no going back on the protest and the Lekki Togit will be occupied. Uh, that, of course, has been scheduled for tomorrow. We have been, uh, we're joined this morning by Prince Francis Chilaka, Executive Director, KUTH, uh, KUTH Foundation, and Mohamed Abdullahi, a public relations consultant. Thank you both for joining us. Good morning to you. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Thank you. Yes, good morning. All right, I'm going to start with uh, Francis Chilaka. Uh, the government's um, reasons for, uh, of course, being against the idea of a protest, it says that, uh, you know, the protest is likely to be hijacked by thugs and uh, uh, the government doesn't want to allow any reason for violence and destruction of the country anymore. Uh, do you agree, you know, that that is a good enough reason to say no to a peaceful protest? I, I, I wouldn't agree with that uh, because if we as Nigerians uh, accept that as a good reason, what it simply means is that uh, the opportunity for the ordinary Nigerian to make demands on governance will be taken away. We cannot say because um, we feel that a protest will be hijacked by hoodlums. Who are these hoodlums? We, ordinarily, we expect that if, if there's going to be a protest, it is the duty of the security agency to also provide security for those who are protesting. And then we need to look at what is the protest all about? I think that as a matter of fact, what the government should be bothering itself is not about whether it's going to be hijacked or not, is to take every necessary measure to ensure that the protest does not hold. And there's only one way to stop that protest, and that is by calling off the takeover of the toll gate by the company. Okay. Until all the nitty gritties surrounding the commission has been brought to light. We haven't seen an interim report. Nigerians are waiting to see an interim report. Nigerians are waiting to know the findings. So I think these are steps that should have been taken before we opening the toll gates. All right. Mr. Abdullahi, let's bring in you. Let's bring you in here. Uh, Nigeria's Minister of Information, Alain Mohammed, he said this yesterday, and I quote, no government anywhere will allow a repeat of the kind of destruction, killings, and maiming wrought by the hijackers of the NSAS protest last year. We just heard uh, Mr. Chilaka's thoughts on this. How about you? What do you think about the statement? Uh, yeah, thank you. Good morning, uh, Nigerians. I think uh, uh, whether we want to agree with uh, the Minister of Information or not, um, it's actually a fact that uh, no government, and even not only government, though, because when we talk about government, we are also talking about the citizen. We are all government, you know, in our own respective right. No government and its people will allow um, wanton destruction of properties. For instance, let me, let, let me chip in this. Um, the amount required to rebuild Lagos from the ANSAS protest, whether I want to say it was hijacked by hoodlums in, in, in October, is actually above one trillion naira. And one trillion naira is exactly the amount of budget Lagos State has signed into law for the year 2021. So it means, you know, in another way around, if you want to rebuild what has been destroyed, there is nothing left for either capital or, or you know, or, or, or concurrent stock in the budget this year. All we need, Lagos need, is to transform that budget of 2021 to rebuild what was destroyed last year. Again, I'm not saying this is not in any way supporting the fact that there shouldn't be a protest or so or, or, or whatsoever. But what I'm trying to say is that we need to be very, very cautious because, like I mentioned earlier, we are all part of governance. If we take part in destroying our home, where are we going to move to? 
So everybody can't leave Nigeria. Everybody can't leave Lagos. You understand? So it's very imperative upon all of us to be very courteous, to be patriotic, because this country belongs to us all, and we shouldn't take part in any way in destroying it. Mr. Abdullahi, so but this, protest, this protest is not to destroy Lagos, is it? It's to occupy the Lekki toll gate such that business would not continue there until justice is served on the victims of the shootings on the night of October 20th. So it's not about destruction. That's what the protesters are saying. They're saying justice before profit. They're saying, let the government, let the Lekki panel, the Lagos panel, reveal the findings, the forensic audits on that toll gate before it's reopened. That's what they're saying. They're not talking about the structure, are they? It is fine that they are not talking about destruction. And I totally agree with that. It is fantastic. But again, we are all Nigerians, and we know how these things run. Now, what are the measures, whether by government or the, pro the proposed protesters, putting in place in order to forestall a hijack like we saw in October 2020? What are the measures? Definitely, there should be measures from government. There should be measures from the protesters themselves to say, OK, this is, what, this is how we, uh, we intend to go about the protest, to make it very, very peaceful. And mind you, you remember, now, what I want to say, this other group are paid or not, but it is a fact that there, there is also a counter protest to say, okay, defend Lagos. If you have been following this, the, 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 the trend, hashtag defend, hashtag defend Lagos. So what are the measures that government and people are putting together, these protesters are putting together to ensure that this thing doesn't go haywire and oh. we have ourselves to blame. Francis I quite agree with you to say they are not planning to destroy Lagos, but, but, but again, what are the measures by government and the people putting together to ensure that it goes peaceful? Francis That's Chilaka, I would like you to respond, uh, respond to that. Um, you see, um, I, I, I think sometimes we, we, we like, I'll tell some people, we play too much in this country and we, we take a lot for granted. Um, honestly speaking, this protest can actually be averted. Government has the power to do that. But unfortunately, we seem to have a government that has no listening ear. And because they don't listen, you know, when you push a child to the wall and there's nowhere else for the child to go, the child will try to find a way out of it. What will it take the government, especially the Lagos State government, who is so afraid of a protest being hijacked? What will it take them to, to hold, to say, OK, we will not hand over the toll gates. We will do that after a forensic report has come out, after a pre preliminary report has been submitted by a commission. So you see, what is playing out is that it brings us back to what has been happening in this country. Every time there's a problem, the government knows what the Nigerian people want. They want to see government in action. The government sets up a panel. And the panel would sit once, twice, or three times, four times. At the end of the day, nothing gets done. And I believe that the government had thought that by now, Nigerians would have forgotten what happened in October. Nigerians would have moved on. But it is not like that, because lives were lost, whether we like it or not. Properties were damaged. People's uh, source of uh, income was affected. So I think that this government owes it as a duty to Nigerians to do everything possible to avert a protest. And the only way they can do that is let us remain, let us go back to status quo until the commission submits a report. All right. Also address the uh, perspective of uh, the defend Lagos um, uh, side of this. And um, uh, the, of course, um, Mr. Abdullahi, Mohammed Abdullahi also mentioned that the government and the protesters have a responsibility to ensure that it is not hijacked. So also quickly um, speak on that. Um, what role do the protesters have to ensure that the protest is not hijacked by those who want to be violent? And where does the government come in here to ensure that um, there's no violence as uh, you know, ha that's happened in the last one? For those of us who followed um, closely the October protest, the NSAS protest, we all would say, we we'll beat our chest and we'll say yes. It was something that started well. It was well organized until it got hijacked. The question is, who hijacked it? We have a policing system. How come our police do not have intel? How come they do not know who these hijackers are? We all saw what was playing out in other, in, especially in Abuja, where people were being conveyed with 
you know, SUVs and all of that. So it is the duty of government. It is the duty of the Nigerian police to provide protection for those who are for the protest and for those who similarly are against the protest. There is nothing wrong with anybody saying, let us protect Lagos. But the question is, we need to know the intentions of those people who want to protect Lagos or to defend Lagos. At what point, what are they trying to defend? Are they trying to say that those who are, who are asking for justice have no right to ask for it? Who are the brains behind this protect Lagos or defend Lagos? So it's something that the government should do. And the government's role is to say that let the Nigerian police provide protection for the two groups if the government is being sincere. Uh, um, the truth of the matter Mr. is that I keep saying it is in it is in the hands of government to stop this protest from taking place. Mr. Abdullahi, quickly, the Defend Lagos group, do you think that they maybe should be interested in protecting um, government property from being destroyed as against going against those who want to peacefully protest? Do you think that maybe the Defend Lagos group should have it in mind that their job at this point is to ensure that government property is not destroyed and they would be able to um, counter in any way, maybe online or you know, on ground, those who have plans, the thugs, the miscreants, as they've been described, who want to uh, destroy government property. Do you think that maybe that's where they should be focused on? Definitely, that's fine. That's, that's a very good angle. But again, that is the statutory function of the Nigerian police. The, Defend Lagos protesters can actually just complement their effort. But statutorily, that is the function of the Nigerian police to ensure that the protest and the protesters are safe, whether you are for or against the protest. You know, but definitely they can complement. But again, I want to, you know, chip into what Mr. Chilaka mentioned, which is which is actually a fact that, you know, I also I, I am of the fact that I also sorry, I'm of the opinion that. It is not at this time that the government should be talking about reopening the toll gate because there are so many salient issues that have not been resolved yet. So, you know, this opening of the toll gate, the opening of the toll gate, sorry, is breeding another issue. So why not analyze the issue the, at hand first before trying to resurrect another issue? So it is not the right time for government to talk about reopening that toll gate. And I think they can share uh, uh, that idea in order to, like, put up the protest in totality. Okay, so I understand that the, the, the government have a right, so to speak, to stop a protest if they feel, you know, this might pose a danger to the people. But on the other hand, we all have a right, especially, you know, in democracies, we have a right to peaceful protest, we have a right to peaceful assembly. So at what point does the government right to stop a protest that might, that seem to, you know, have the potential to escalate into violence? At what point does that now begin to infringe on the rights of the ordinary citizens to peaceful assembly, like the Occupy Lagos protest for Saturday? Mr. Chilaka. Power belongs to the people. Democracy is government for the people, by the people, and of the people. And our leaders need to understand that these are the tenets of democracy. The people have a right more than those they have elected. We have elected them. They must listen to us. But unfortunately, we must say things the way they are. We've had governments that do not listen to the people. What we've had in Nigeria is government that decides what they think the people need and not what the people really need themselves. If you are saying you have a right to stop a protest and the people are saying we also have a right to protest, agreed. The question begging for an answer is, what is government doing to ensure that there is a level playing ground? The government should look at the demands of those who are saying they want to protest. And a sensitive government a proactive government by now would have said, good, let us avert this situation. We feel that this protest will be hijacked. We feel that lives will be lost. It is the duty of government to protect the lives and property of Nigerians. And the government must do everything within its power to ensure that at every point, the lives and property of Nigerians are protected. And the only way this, this right now, this the only way we can avert the protest is by saying, call off the issue 
of opening the toll gate. It's like the Nigeria, it's like the universities that have been shut down for a long, a long time. What are their demands? The demands, 90% of the demands is not even for university lecturers. 90% of the demands is to ensure that we have a good environment, sound education for our younger generations. What will it stop? What will stop government from finding a level playing ground? The government should stop playing with the lives of Nigerians, which is what has been going on. We are not in a country where we have no rights. We have a right, and the government must respect that. And not always wielding the big stick. The government must learn the act of negotiation and inclusive governance. Hmm. All right. Okay, I would like to ask Mr. Abdullahi this question. In the statements that Lai Mohammed, you know, issued, he made this quote. He said, security agents are ready for any eventuality. Should intending protesters take this as, you know, a statement that the government is ready to protect them? Or could it be interpreted as a threat, saying security agents are ready for any eventuality? Uh, now, you know, we need to look at precedence seriously in interpreting some of these statements. Uh, when uh, the minister says the, um, the, the, the government or the, the security agencies are ready, but what, what are the precedents? Yeah? What are the precedents? Uh, uh, that we've had over the years or over time of such situation. Are our security agencies apparently? Uh, the fact is, uh, I, bet, I bet to disagree. So, you know, uh, even with recent situations, so, you know, you take that uh, with a pinch of salt, um, no insult uh, intended, but seriously, we take that with a pinch of salt because of the president, what has been happening? You know, uh, just yesterday, sorry to, to digress a little, just yesterday at Obalende, where you have a police um, um, force headquarters there, you know, we had uh, miscreants fighting and I think shooting. And I saw a video where, you know, some a small group of policemen were just like standing and, and watching, you know, like it's a football game or so. So uh, it's very difficult for the protesters now to believe that you know, security agencies are standby to protect them. It's very difficult. But again, I wouldn't say it's a threat because, like, you know, every government in the world will find a way, whether through statement, whether through fact, whether through action, to say they want to protect their citizens, their proper, the properties of their citizens, and so on and so forth. So, but I will still go back to my argument that the best way to protect the citizens of Lagos at this moment and the property of Lagos at this moment is to share the idea of reopening that toll gate now. That is the best way. That's just the simple best way. Okay. Right. You know, um, you don't um, want uh, to uh, start thinking uh, of eventualities and counter it. No. What do you do proactively? You have seen that you made this statement and it has generated furrow. It has generated anger. So what do you do? You rescind it. It's simple. All right. Um, to both of you now, I think if you can, in 30 seconds each, um, what would your suggestions be um, for the NSARS or Occupy uh, like it gate protesters, would you ask them to shelve the protest until they are sure that the government will, you know, be on their side and, you know, play its role in protecting peaceful protesters? Or would you say, go ahead, because the Nigerian government doesn't or hasn't seen sincere in its um, um, actions with regards allowing peaceful protesters? Um, I'm going to start with um, Abdullahi, um, Mohammed Abdullahi and then another 30 seconds for Francis Chilaka. In as much as you know, people have the right to protest, you know, to air their grievances and so on and so forth. But at this moment, at this moment, what we see in Lagos concerning the last strike, um, the last protest, I would actually advise the protesters to say to share their action for a moment and give government the benefit of the doubt. But at the same time, ask government to also rescind their decision of reopening the toll gates. Thank mm. you. All right, Francis Chilaka. Well, I, I think that we, 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 we seem to be say, uh, we, you know, focusing on Lagos, but we forget that this thing has a way of boomeranging. If this protest holds tomorrow in Lagos, trust me, it will hold in other states. So it is right time the government, the government has hours, several hours to play with today. I believe that between now and 12 noon, the federal government or the state government should shield the, the opening of the toll gate to ensure that this protest does not hold. 
All Indeed. Right. Thank you very much for your time and thoughts, uh, Mr. Abdullahi, there saying, you know, it's important for us to have dialogue. Let the people, you know, hold on and let them say the government too should not allow LCC to repossess the toll gate. And uh, Mr. Chilaka's thoughts there as well. Thank you so much. We're very grateful for your time this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, well, it's also day. very important to know if... Um, well, um, Francis, like I mentioned, the government, you know, hasn't shown to always listen to the thoughts of the people um, or the cries of the people. Uh, does the government understand that at a time like this, they maybe should put the LCC takeover on hold? Indeed. Um, do they understand that it's also their role to protect peaceful protests? I mean, if that's the bone of they, contention, that's yes. where the solution should come from, not from reactions yeah. to the so, issue. So, so, so do, are they aware? You know, is it? Of course <laughs> they are. We, we, we <laughs> talk about they? these things a lot, you know, and, you know, we have analysts, really, really sound analysts who say um, it as it is. But is the government aware? See, is I the Lagos State governor aware that issue... his responsibility, and apologies, is, that his responsibility at a time like this is to have a conversation with his best advisors and, uh, you know, get people to tell him that, oh, God, this is what the bone of contention is here. And it's best that you put it on hold, at least until the people understand that you've, your efforts are genuine and sincere. Does Mr. Lai Mohammed understand that it is the government's responsibility to ensure that people can protest peacefully and you have the protection of the police uh, to ensure that there's no breakdown of law and order? Is it, does he understand that if there's breakdown of law and order, it is because of a failure of the government to prevent that? You see, one of my issues with this, not just this lucky protest, whether it's fuel hike, electricity tariff hike, whatever it is, there's an issue at stake, a fundamental issue. Like I said, maybe it's the increase in fuel, maybe it's um, the reopening of the toll gates. These issues are then sidelined. And then when people react to them, the government now attack the reactions. I mean, if you can just fix the key issue, we won't be having protests. People won't be reacting negatively to this. So I just hope that the government is listening and see that the bone of contention here is the fact that Nigerians are not happy that the LCC is about to repossess the, the, the Lekki toll gate when there's an in ongoing investigation there not yet concluded. So if that issue is actually addressed like our, our analysts and experts have said, very, 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 I mean, let's, let's take for instance, if the government comes on to say today, this morning, that the Lekki toll gate would not be operated by the LCC until investigation is complete. Trust me, everybody will go back home. So, so, so um, there is also the, the, you know, the part that we shouldn't leave out. Um, at what point are the protesters going to be satisfied? If the, if the governor of Lagos State says, oh, well, we're going to put this takeover on hold. On hold, yes. Um, and then there's going to be a forensic investigation. If, if the forensic investigation sh um, shows, um, um, you know, results that people are not very happy with, you know, will they be also worried to protest again? That will be so, another kettle of fish. Exactly. Well, the issues so, are step by step. So, so, this is the main issue now. <laughs> when the forensic investigation audit is out, that will now be another issue. Uh, well, um, some other thing is... It shouldn't take months or years to investigate and really? give justice to those people who are affected by the high-handedness uh, high of uh, Special Angel Robbery Squad officers and Nigerian police officers. It shouldn't take years. We've seen these panels have these discussions, seen people give testimonies. How long is it going to take before we see that, oh, this person has been found guilty, this police officer that shot this person <laughs> or killed this person has been found guilty? Let me read something to you, Saragi. Here's the minister's statement. He said... Six soldiers and 37 policemen were murdered in cold blood and 269 private and public property were rooted and raised during the last protest. In this statement, there was nothing about the people who died. Yes. There was nothing about, about Nigerians who lost their lives, Nigerians who were injured, but just about six soldiers and 37 policemen. They almost do not exist or do it not It now matter. shows you, it now, it now makes you ask, is, is this really a government of the people or a government of you know, security officials. And we're, well, anyway, we're, we're out of time. Let, let's get into something else. We're taking a break. When we come back, we're talking cryptocurrency. The Senate has once again, well, this time, summoned the CBN governor and, of course, the DG of Security and Exchange Commission. Uh, we'll talk about that, um, and um, that comes up after the short break. <laughs>